Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to color grade a video clip using Magic's Movie Edit Pro. Okay, so on my desktop, I've got this folder and inside this folder, I've got this one video clip. I downloaded this video clip from Pixabay. I'll put a link to that in the YouTube description. Let's go ahead and open up Magic's Movie Edit Pro and I'll drag and drop that video clip into the timeline. So we can see this video clip. It's pretty good, but it looks a little bit washed out and I want to try and add some contrast, maybe change the colors just make things pop a little bit more in this video clip. So let's click on the video clip and we'll go over to effects. And the first thing we can adjust is the brightness and contrast. Now this image is quite bright as it is. So when you adjust the brightness, if you adjust it and it looks, it's not looking right, that's probably telling you that the brightness is actually okay, right? So if it's quite bright, too bright, you can bring it down. Or if it's too dark, you can bring it up. But the brightness on this video clip is pretty good. So I'm going to leave it at around 50. The contrast is going to be the difference between the light and dark. So if I drag this contrast this way, you can see it ain't looking right. So we're going to start to drag it in the opposite direction. And as we drag it in the opposite direction, our shadows are going to get much darker. We're going to see a nice contrast between the water and our background and wherever there's dark elements in this particular clip. So I'm going to leave the contrast here around 70. Now, depending on what video you're editing, you may want to increase or decrease the contrast, right? It's all about the video clip and it's all about your perception of what this clip or how you can improve the color and the imagery within this video. So it's down to your own eyes what you want it to look like. If you ever watch the Matrix video, you see there's like a sort of a green tone over the, a lot of the video content. This sort of like green hue over a lot of the content. So that video was edited in that particular style or format. So it's down to your own perception, right? So I want to have like a lot of darks in here, but I want to also bring back a lot of the detail in these in these dark areas as well. So we have gamma here. And gamma is going to affect the lightness and the darkness of this clip as well. It's almost like holistic, right? So the gamma, I'm going to leave that really at zero. I don't really want to change the gamma, but the HDR gamma, I want to bring that up. And that's going to just improve the detail in a lot of these darker areas. So where it's quite dark and we're losing a lot of the detail, we can bring the gamma up and we can improve the darkness or improve the um, these dark areas. So I'm going to set the gamma to around 50. Then you've got HDR blur. If I set that right down, a lot of these stones, you're going to lose a lot of the detail in the stones, right? And a lot of the um, the, the elements in this, this video clips. So as we bring the blur right up, I normally set this all the way up because I get a lot of detail in these sort of shadows on this rock. Uh, it would just make things look a lot better, right? So look, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it looks right here, right now. So we're going to go over to color. And in color, normally the only thing I ever do is just improve the saturation. I want these plants to look a lot, look like they've got a lot more color in them, especially like the green up here in the plants. So let's not do that too much. Let's set it to around 30. And then you can play around with these settings here. If, if for any reason when you're filming, you've got too much red, you can bring down your red tones, you can increase your red tones. But the tones in here are pretty good. So I'm going to leave these as they are. And this is the hue. So this is the overall color if you want to add an extra bit of color normally this hue normally i would like move it towards the blue side if it's sort of like a daylight scene like a cold daylight scene or move it more towards the red and yellows if you want to add some warmth um that's normally what i do but if you know if you want to have a bit of matrix you can add some green into it if you like but i'm going to leave this pretty much in the middle because i kind of like the tone is already set here so let's go over to color correction and inside color correction we've got the foreground select mode so I'm going to click the add tool here to add to the foreground selection and I'm going to set it to foreground here foreground and I'm going to click on the water so that will basically allow me to select that particular shade right the water color and then we can change the color of the water and not affect the rest of this scene so let's say we want to add a little bit of blue to that water there's this little tool down here the color wheel tool and I'm going to drag that towards the blue colors so if I drag it all the way down, you can see it's quite extreme. You can see the blue here is quite extreme. So you can manage this by rotating around here. You can rotate around on the colors. And I'm going to rotate it around on the sort of pale blue sort of colors here. And then we can so we can tell the software how much correction do we want. Do we want a lot of correction or just a little bit? I just want a little bit of correction here, right? We don't want that blue to be too extreme. So we just want to add a slight tone of blue to the water. And then you can increase or decrease the saturations. So you can be very finite with this. We just want a little bit of blue sort of tone there. So I'm pretty much done with color grading this particular clip. So how does this now compare 
to the original that's what we want to see so what I'll do is go back to the folder and drag a second copy of the clip right and to compare both of them all we'll do is click on this S switch track and we can switch between the two of them right like this and we can see the original so it's quite washed out sort of pretty washed out the colors in here and then when we turn this track back on we can see the difference between them so we can see a lot more vibrancy in the plants uh, the shadows are a lot darker and the water has got this slight blue tone to it whereas this one was pretty washed out um, it is a water scene so it's going to be a bit washed out but you can see the difference between them now you can see how the colors over here are much more vibrant especially around where the plants are and the darker shadows are a lot darker and the water pops out a lot more now in this particular scene so when we click play we can see the difference here and if I turn the track off you can see the difference here right and let's turn it back on and now you can see the difference so the color grading for me is down to your own perception it's no, there's no specific rule to this right it's not a case that it must look in this sort of certain way or it must you know the colors must look in a certain way you filmed it so it's down for you to um, apply the color grades and grade it the way that you want it to be that's how I suggest we should do things right how you want that clip to look like um, if you're filming on two different devices so imagine if you're filming um, two different shots so sometimes if I'm filming on my phone and I've got two different phones or maybe I've got a camcorder and a phone and I'm filming two different things at the same resolution but those devices are going to you know capture the, the content in their own style and format based on those devices so the camcorder might give much better quality than the phone but then we can take those two video clips into magic smooth edit pro and then we can try and color grade them and get them to match up a little bit better by using these three tools across here okay so that's the end of this tutorial that's how i go about color grading using magic smooth edit pro and i hope you find this tutorial useful and i look forward to seeing you in the next dcp web tutorial